starting off with the most exciting and only hardware announcement, we have the new Mac computers, which have been rumored for a while now. Of course, these are made even more exciting by the new M2 chip, but we'll get to that later. MagSafe is back on the new MacBook Air, which is fantastic to keep your laptop safe from clumsy trips and the power cord from pulling your laptop off the desk. Additionally, that means you still get two USB-C Thunderbolt ports, which is definitely nicer than only having two ports and needing to use one for power. On the right side, you get a 3.5mm audio port that supports higher impedance headphones and earphones. The laptop is still incredibly slim and lightweight though, coming in at 11.3mm thick and 1.22kg heavy while still keeping an 18-hour battery life on video playback. As for display, it's a new liquid retina screen that's further enhanced by slimmer bezels, resulting in a 13.6-inch display that looks gorgeous and clear, with 500 nits of max brightness. The four speakers and three mic array are integrated between the keyboard and display, with support for spatial audio built in. With everybody having to take more calls lately, Apple has finally given the webcam on the MacBook Air a much-needed upgrade with a new 1080p camera. For the style conscious, there'll be four colors available, space gray, silver, starlight, and a new midnight color that's absolutely beautiful. There are also new charger options, with a super convenient 35 watt charger that offers two USB-C ports, or a fast charging option with a 67 watt power adapter. For pro users though, we get the new 13 inch MacBook Pro, also with the M2 chip. Video editors will definitely be among the list of people interested in checking this laptop out. With ProRes encode and decode support, the laptop is able to play back up to 11 streams of 4K ProRes video or up to 2 streams of 8K ProRes video. Okay, so let's move on and talk Apple Silicon. The M1 chip was introduced over a year and a half ago, and while there have been new models released, like the M1 Pro and M1 Max, Rumors started swirling about an M2 chip last year. Well, we're finally seeing it now. It's a 5 nanometer chip with 20 billion transistors, which is 25% more than the original M1 chip. The unified memory bandwidth has also been increased, with support for up to 24 gigabytes of unified memory now. The chip is an 8 core CPU with 4 high performance cores and 4 high efficiency cores, providing 18% better performance than the M1. As for the GPU, it's 10 core and offers up to 35% better performance than the M1. The chip's media engine has a higher bandwidth video decoder that supports 8K H.264 and HEVC video, with the ability to play back multiple streams of 8K and 4K video. There's also a new image signal processor that results in better image noise reduction. We'll most likely see Apple transition to M2 for their remaining Mac lineup or some variant of the M2, like a M2 Max or M2 Ultra in the near future. Rounding off the Mac announcements is this year's new Mac OS Ventura, with some exciting new features. The one that's probably of most interest is Stage Manager, which offers a new way to keep Windows organized and easy to find. Similar to the taskbar on Windows computers, Stage Manager moves Windows off to the side in a small dock of sorts. So when you're using a window, it's up front and center, while the other windows and apps are clustered by the left side. Additionally, for apps with multiple windows, they're all gathered together and stacked, and users can cycle through the open windows by clicking on the left. Windows can be overlapped and grouped together by dragging from the left sidebar, and Stage Manager will actually remember which windows are grouped together, so that they open together as well. Very nifty. If you're using a Mac and you have an iPhone, well, why not take advantage of how great the iPhone cameras are? Continuity Camera allows for users to use their iPhone as a webcam for the Mac, connecting wirelessly. Features like center stage, studio lighting, and portrait mode will all be available when using the iPhone as a webcam, making it the perfect option to get even better video quality on calls. There's also desk view when using Continuity Camera a feature that allows the iPhone's ultra-wide camera to be used to show the user's desk while simultaneously showing the user's face. It's quite mind-blowing how the cameras are able to do this, and we'll definitely have to try this out for ourselves when available. Safari has had some changes too, with tab groups now able to be shared with others. People can add tabs into the groups at any time, and you can even see who's looking at what tabs. Additionally, Apple is introducing their solution to going passwordless, passkeys. 
Passkeys utilize biometric verification from Face ID or Touch ID to create a secure digital key that stays on device, meaning hackers can't use them. Of course, Passkeys will sync across Mac, iPad, iPhone, and Apple TV thanks to iCloud Keychain. People can even sign into websites or apps on non-Apple devices just by using their iPhone. Handoff now is extended to FaceTime, with the ability to switch video calls between Mac, iPad, and iPhone with the click of a button. All you need to do is bring your iPhone or iPad close to your Mac, and a pop-up will show on the top right corner of the screen. The developer beta for Mac OS Ventura is available today, with the public beta slated for July. Full public release will be in the fall, as per usual. When Apple released iPadOS 15, there was a bunch of improvements, multitasking and productivity being one of the biggest. Well, Apple has built on that in iPadOS 16. We can now have windows overlapping each other and able to be resized on the iPad, a feature that many have been clamoring for, along with the new Stage Manager feature. With this, it will bring the iPad experience even more in line with our proper computers. For the M1 iPad Pro and M1 iPad Air users, Full external display support is now available, meaning you can plug in displays with up to 6K resolution and use them as extensions of the screen rather than just screen mirroring as it is right now. Apple also knows that some people might push their iPads to the limit, and with virtual memory swap, there is now the option to use iPad storage to expand the available memory for all apps up to 16GB. For the creative professionals who use iPad for their work, whether it be color grading videos or editing photos, there's now reference mode, allowing the 12.9-inch M1 iPad Pro paired with a Liquid Retina XDR display to match reference color requirements in the workflow. As like macOS Ventura, the developer beta for iPadOS 16 is out to date, with the public beta in July. Full release will be in the fall. But now we come to iOS, and as usual, Apple has announced its new iOS 16 that's packed full with new features. But something that should excite a lot of people would be the ability to have customizable lock screens that look absolutely incredible. You'll be able to customize three areas, the date, the time, and an additional field under that where you can add widgets such as your activity rings, the temperature, battery levels, and more. Using photos taken with an iPhone will result in a depth effect for the subjects, and you can even adjust the position of the subject or resize it if needed. There are also font choices and color options with different shades available to be picked. In order to let you fully enjoy that new lock screen, Apple has made new notifications roll up from the bottom instead of the top. Small change, but a welcome one. There are also new live activities notifications for apps that send many notifications in a short period of time. Notifications from a sports app on what's happening in a game, for example, and you're getting real-time notifications. Or, if you're enjoying music, the song and controls are now on the bottom with album art displaying in the middle of the screen. Another huge change is the revamp to messages. Apple is adding the ability to edit messages after sending, recall messages with undo send, and mark any thread as unread. SharePlay, which was previously only available on FaceTime, is now coming to messages as well, with people able to watch shows or movies, listen to music, and more together while interacting with each other through text. People who use maps to plan out their routes will be happy to hear that Apple is finally introducing multi-stop routing, with support for up to 15 different stops. Previous routes are stored in Recents, with the ability to plan on a Mac and have it synced to iPhone. There's now a new way to share photos with your friends and family, and it's iCloud Shared Photo Library. This is a separate iCloud library that everyone can use, with the ability to share the library with up to 5 people. You can select when you want to share, or just share everything in your photo library. New photos taken after the creation of the library can be manually added, but it's much more convenient just to toggle the new switch button in the camera app that will send photos taken directly to the library. Additionally, edits made to the photos in the shared library will be synced and shared across everybody's devices, making it so much more convenient. For the music lovers out there, there's now the option to personalize spatial audio for your ears with the iPhone's True Depth camera able to be used to create a personal profile and scan of the user's head and ears to tweak spatial audio for them. The fitness app is also coming to iPhone, which allows for certain fitness tracking metrics even if the user doesn't have an Apple Watch. The iPhone sensors can track steps, flights climbed, distance, and more to provide an estimate of active calories to use to contribute to the user's move goal. 
Medications can now be added into the health app, allowing for reminders on when to take certain medication or just to have an easy list of what medication, vitamins, and supplements are being taken. In the US, users will be able to scan labels of medication to add them quickly and conveniently to the app, and there are even warnings if drug-drug interactions are found. Smart home owners will be pleased to know Apple has revamped the main tab of the app, allowing for users to see their entire smart home setup with one glance, while still having a category overview at the top for climate, lights, security, and more. There's something for everyone, and car owners who use CarPlay will be happy to hear that Apple is looking to integrate the software even more deeply with a car's hardware. One of the biggest changes will be the ability to let CarPlay provide content over multiple screens in the car. Using the data from the vehicle, CarPlay is able to show all of that data in the instrument cluster, with gauges for fuel, speed, temperature, and more. Last but not least, Watch OS. As for Watch OS 9, it's actually not quite as big as people expected. We're getting new watch faces though, four to be precise. Lunar, which shows the lunar calendar, astronomy, metropolitan, and playtime. A fun watch face designed in collaboration with artist Joy Fulton. Something that really has me excited though, is the introduction of sleep stages in sleep tracking. Now, users will be able to see exactly how much of their sleep is spent in REM, deep sleep, and such, allowing for better analysis of their sleep quality. For more people though, another exciting announcement would be the improved metrics for workouts. There is now support for heart rate zones, custom workouts that can alert when goals set for heart rate, heart rate zone, pace, speed, and more aren't being met. There's also a new multi-sport workout option that can switch seamlessly between running, biking, and swimming, allowing for triathletes to track their workouts without having to fiddle with changing workout types in the middle of the session. Runners will also be happy that Apple isn't leaving them out, with the addition of new metrics like stride distance, ground contact time, and vertical oscillation added. Best and last results on frequently used routes will be stored and available for runners to race against with a new pacer feature that allows runners to set their distance and time goals so that they can be guided with the optimal pace during the run. Atrial fibrillation tracking is even more powerful in watchOS 9, with the new AFib history feature allowing users to track how frequently a user's heart rhythm shows signs of atrial fibrillation, with weekly notifications and detailed history in the health app. The developer beta is now available with the public beta following in July. Full release will be made available to the public in the fall. And that's about it for WWDC 22. Are you guys excited? We sure are.